Hey everybody, welcome to the Electrician's Boot Camp. My name is Scott Pomerico. Today we'll be talking a little bit about voltage drop and the importance of voltage drop. You've probably seen a couple of my other videos. This one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, what we'll kind of do is this one will be a little bit of picture in picture. Uh, again, take a look at it and uh, tell me what you think. And again, if you like it, just uh, like down the bottom. And uh, also, if you want to subscribe to my channel, you can do that as well. And we'll also have a link later on, so you can go to our website and uh, email us if you have any other questions. All right, so like I said, we'll go over the voltage drop calculations. I just wanted to try something else new. Uh, I just wanted to maybe, uh, you know, take a look at... Uh, some of the uh, formulas that I have put together for this voltage drop, and maybe it'll help you when you're taking your test. So, uh, again, you know, take a look at it and uh, just tell me what you think. All right, when we talk about voltage drop, we talk about voltage drop through conductors. And if we take a look, and if we look at from the beginning here where the service comes in, okay, to the end, to the last part where the last receptacle or motor is, that would be 5%. When we're doing our calculations, what we do is we take a look at 3%, which would basically be from our panel or sub-panel, or it could be our main panel, to a particular device and or motor. When we look in the code, it tells us that section 210.19a, informational note, that we will use 3%. And that 5% will be used for uh, both the feeders and the branch circuits. So like I said, on the test, you'll be using 3%. Okay? So again, just to reiterate, 3%. Okay? Now again, if you didn't have this sub-panel, you would be um, going from your main panel to your motor. Okay? So again, that would the, the sub-panel would be there, but it would still be 3%. Okay, the 5% is from a panel to the furthest thing away from the device, motor, whatever the case, from your panel. Okay, circular mill area, the diameter of a wire is converted into mills. This number in mills is uh, diameter squared. Okay, one of the things I did when I put together my uh, presentation, I, 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 I kind of talked about what voltage drop is and I kind of told you what voltage drop is. So if you see this table here, this is just telling you what voltage drop is. Okay? So it's 3%. So it's 3% of a voltage. So it's 208 times 3% would be 6.24. 480 times 3%, 14.1 excuse me, 14.40. Okay? So again, that's uh, basically what we're looking at when we're talking about uh, voltage drop. Those are the numbers. And when we get to the formulas, you'll see that we'll take that voltage drop, those numbers. So we'll have to take the and times it by that 3% to give us voltage drop. All right. One of the other things we have to look at is the conductor properties. And that is table 8. And if you take a look here, if you notice, I have an arrow, arrow number 1 for first thing gives you the AWG. Okay, American wire gauge. And it starts off at this, you know, it starts off up at the top with the small wires and goes all the way down to the larger wires at the bottom. Uh, the next column will give you the circular mills of that wire, which we're going to need for the, uh, volt, for the voltage drop and for to find exact K as well. The next one, we will be finding 1 and 7. 1 and 7 is your quantities, which means that it's either uh, stranded or solid. Okay? If you look at the far column, it says uncoated. Uncoated would be, um, at the top here, it says per th ohms per thousand feet. And we're going to use that as well for our K factors. We always also talk about, or I always talk about definitions. Definition. So as you can see here, voltage drop, okay, is a, is a definition where it pushes a given amount of current through a given amount of resistance. Uh, two would be the, for single phase, we would use that in the single phase calculation. You'll see that 1.732 is the square root. We'll be using that for our three phase calculations. 
K will be using later on. <clears throat> Again, in our calculations, which will be 12.9 or 21.2, whether it's copper or aluminum. And you'll see where we're going to do an exact K factor as well. This K factor here can be used if we are only, uh, if they don't tell us what kind of wire it is. If they just say it's number six wire, they don't call it out. They just tell us that. Then we have length of the wire, ampacity 100%. And our circular mills, which we just looked at from table 8. Okay, let's take a look at some of the formulas. <clears throat> if we take a look at the formulas here, uh, we'll find to find voltage drop for single phase. It's voltage drop uh, is 2 times K times I times L divided by circular mills. Okay, three phase, notice that we only changed the 1.732 right here. So it's only 1.732. As you can see that the, the, the problem stays the same, but we just changed that 1.732. Notice how when, <clears throat> excuse me, we want to find the circular mills down here of a wire. We want to find the size of the wire. Circular mills, again, 2K Li, right, divided by voltage drop. Now this is that number that I said where we would take that 208 or that voltage and we would times it by 3% and get a number. Okay, and then notice for three phase, it's just 1.732. Okay, so for the most part, we're just going to deal right now with these two uh, formulas. All right, uh, the other formulas are length and opacity, which uh, again, it's not on the test most of the time, but we will cover that in another video. Okay, so voltage drop, uh, again, increases voltage, will allow more voltage to be dropped. Decreasing ampacity reduces the amount of current flowing through a circuit requiring a small size wire. To calculate uh, how much voltage is dropped on a conductor of a circuit, the above, these formulas are being used. Okay, so again, I gave you those formulas, which you saw right here. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, our K values at 75 degrees, because table 8 is based on 75 degrees, we would be 12.9 and 21.2 again. Okay? All right, so let's just be clear on that. All right? All right, so let's look at a problem. If we uh, look at this particular problem where it says 240 volt, number 8 wire, 30 amps at 150 feet. Okay, so here's our formula. All right? So it's 2K. K is a constant length, opacity, circular mills. So if I fill this in, okay, this would be my problem here. And basically then what I would do is just 2 times 12.9 times 150 times 30. I would divide that by 16, 5, 10, and I would get an answer. All right. So if you want to take a minute to pause the video and just get that answer, great. Otherwise, we can move on. All right, here's another one, 240 volt, number 8, 30 amps, 150 feet away. We're looking for circular mills. Okay, again, same thing. We would divide that, and then notice I did the 240 times 3%, which is 720 volts. Okay, so if I did 2 times my K, which is 12.9 times 150 times 30 times my uh, excuse me, divided by my 240 times 3%. So do the 240 times 3% first, get your answer, and then divide, so then divide this number, the top number, by the by that number that you get, which is 7.20 volts, and then you'll, you'll get an answer. Again, um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, email me. So if we looked at table 8, we would notice that if we took a 1,000, if we took a down at the bottom thousand KC mills, we looked at that, okay, and we looked across another uncoated, all right, we would see a number of zero, we would see this number right here, zero, one, two, nine. If we times that by a thousand, we would get our 12.9. If we looked at the same column of thousand and we went all the way across to, to aluminum and we we got this 0212, and we times that by 1,000, we would wind up with 21.2, okay? That's how they get that K value. Okay, if we wanted to find exact K, though, 
the formula would be circular mills, which we would get from table 8, resistance, which we would get from table 8, divided by 1,000. Okay, that's exact K. So if they give you a specific type of wire, we could find exact K. If they don't give us the wire, if they just say number 8 wire, we can use the 12.9 for copper or 21.2. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I found the exact K for number four wire. Here's my circular mills. Here's my quantity. All right, it's stranded. And here's my ohms per thousand feet. As you can see here, I took 41740. Okay, times that by 0 0.308. All right, and I divided that by a thousand. And I actually wound up with 12.86, which is basically 12.9. But that's my exact K for that particular wire. Okay. So if we took a look at 31015B16, we noticed there's a 60 degree, a 75 degree, and a 90 degree. When we're table nine only deals with the nine with the 75 degree. So the 90 and the 60 are not dealt with. We have to then make an adjustment for table 8 for the 60 and 90 degree. And I'll show you how we'll do that. Okay. So again, <clears throat> here's that K factor that we just found out. Now for 60 degree, we divide by 1.05. All right. And for 90 degree, we times 1.05. Okay. So we would get 12.25 for 60 degree. Okay, and we would wind up for 90 degree, we would wind up with 13.05. All right, so you can see the K factors there as well. Okay, if we took an example of voltage drop, we have one and a half horsepower, 240 volt, uh, copper solid number 12, THHN, which we know is in the 90 degree column because we can look that up in 310.16 or 310.15B16, and it's 225 feet away from the panel. So <clears throat> again, uh, you know, we can uh, we can we can go through that problem, okay, and uh, we can figure that out. All right. So we would we would this would be single phase, okay. So we'd have to look up the uh, one and a half horsepower motor in in, in two four thirty dot two 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 forty eight. I'm sorry, and then we would look up the two forty volt. And we would get a ampacity. Once we had that, it'd be two times our K, which we could figure out our exact K factor. Okay, times our ampacity, which we just got. All right, times our length, which is 225, divided by our voltage drop, which would be 240 times 3%. Okay, so again, I just I just put these uh, down there for you. Just uh, again, work through the examples, and uh, again, if you have any problems. Feel free to email me or contact me, and I'll, I can work you through these problems. Again, I'm just giving you some quick examples of voltage drop to try to help you through the uh, test process. Okay, this one here is a feeder, 5 horsepower, 230 volt, 150 feet away. Uh, do not exceed uh, the NEC recommendations. So let's just take a look at this one. <clears throat> here I put down the... Uh, the equation for you, okay, I found the 15.2 amps from uh, 430.250, okay, so here's your equation here, all right, and here's all the information that I need, okay, so I figured that out, okay, and then I put it into my problem, and I found out that I needed number 10 wire, so again, this is another uh, example of uh, one of the problems that you could look at to, uh, again, do voltage drop. So, again, take your time, look at it. What I would like you to do is uh, subscribe to my channel. You'll see a box in the corner, all right, which will, show up, which will show up in the corner, all right, this red box. You can click on that. It'll take you to my channel. You could subscribe to my channel for my videos. Uh, you could also like this video down below. Or you can email me at www.electriciansbootcamp.com. Thank you for watching.